to the at-home edition of Rocket League Central. I'm Brody Leafex Moore, and we have everything you need to stay informed on the Rocket League scene. We got a big one for you guys today. Of course, the European Major is the big focus in Grid Watch. We're going down under in Double Tap, and we have a plethora of fun for you guys in Breakout. Quick note though, before we get started, a recent patch just came out and alongside the Ford F-150 and some bugs that have been fixed, there is also a new two-factor authentication that's needed on Epic accounts if you wanna do some trades. So if you're in that trading community or you wanna give some credits to some friends, make sure to hop onto your Epic account and enable that two-factor authentication. I know it's a little annoying at first, but of course it does stop scammers from potentially stealing your titanium white Apex wheels. So kind of beneficial and you need it now so get on there and get, fix that so you can make some trades but if you don't care just jump on rocket league hang out in the show we got it coming up here to start us off it's grid watch where we talk about the european winter major <laughs> The hotly anticipated RLCS Season X Winter Split European Major has arrived, and while the results may not be surprising, the event still produced some of the most exciting back and forth matches of the season thus far. All eyes were on reigning regional champions BDS at the outset of the tournament, and their first match certainly didn't disappoint. Facing off against Galaxy Racer, who had defeated Scrub Killer's Team Singularity in the prior round, BDS had a slow start, losing the first game 2-1. But it quickly became clear that they were just warming up, as the Euro Titans proceeded to sweep Galaxy Racer in the next three straight games, in what we like to call the Spaceman Sweep. Despite the latter's spirited defense and a desperate minute-long overtime in the final round. And Ixo bangs it away into the midfield. Lovely clearance from Ixo. Arch trying to help it on its way, but Mark by eight taking out Ixo. It's now 1v3 again. And once again, Mitain gets the important touch. Extra has to go wide. He finds Mark by eight though. What a goal from BDS to shut this game down. I thought he was forced wide and he was, but Mark by eight, right place, right time. Fresh boost pickup. Beautiful placement, beautiful goal. Team BDS win the Series 3-1. Their semi-final match would be against Vitality, one of the few teams which stood a chance of dethroning the once and future Kings. Once again, the challengers pulled off an early win, and once again, BDS struck back with three consecutive wins before they could build any momentum. Vitality weren't gonna go down that easy though, and leveraged their heroic resolve to win two more games, putting both teams that match point. Mark by eight makes up for his earlier mistake. Gets it as far as Fairy Peak. This one looking like it's going for overtime. Unless something seriously crazy happens, it doesn't, Stumpy. And we're going all the way in game six. Vitality wanting the game seven. Do they get it off the kickoff? Oh, he's got it, it falls well. And Kadop is the man to finish it off. It only took six seconds and two goals. But Vitality bring us to champions. The final game was close, but the combined efforts of Monkey Moon and Mark by Eight won a decisive scramble to score the sole goal of the match, sending BDS to winner's finals while Vitality plunged to lower bracket. Eventually, atones for his mistake. Alpha in the corner. Wants to push this one towards Fairy Peak. He's desperate to get a touch. He can't overcommit though, even with seven seconds left. Vitality have to make it work right here, right now. BDS gonna get the next touch. Kadok, can he force anything? I don't think he can, Stumpy. It has to happen now for Vitality. Now or never, Vitality find themselves in crunch time as that ball hits the floor, though. While BDS breezed through Dignitas to the grand finals in a 4-1 blowout, Vitality struggled through lowers in a close set after close set in order to secure a rematch with their rivals. Vitality's run culminated in a lower final set against the fallen Dignitas, a true slobber knocker which seesawed back and forth with every single game until Vitality eventually emerged victorious. And thus, they entered the grand finals for another shot at BDS crown. It's game seven was needed, but game seven Vitality is something else entirely, especially with this man, Alpha 54. Never in doubt for that finish. Apparently Jack head in hands, but Dignitas already laughing it off. They know that they've got third. They've done a fantastic job getting here. And Vitality, there were sighs of release. There were fist bumps. There's a late goal just to give them a little bit of a consolation prize. 
In the end, though, Vitality are your lower final winners, and they will be facing off against the gods, Team BDS. Once again, Vitality secured an early lead, making it seem like they had perhaps learned from their previous loss and were prepared to take down the champs this time. But in a tragic inversion of their previous set against BDS, despite winning three out of their first four games in the set, BDS bounced back to tie things up in the latter half. Cadbury pick out right an extra piece of to it. BDS are given Vitality nothing. Extra has been everywhere this entire game. There is nothing available for Team Vitality. And now it is time to show what they have got. Because they are going to Game 7 as Team BDS look to hold on to their perfect record in Grand Finals. They are 7-0 oh, heading into this. It had again come down to the final game of the set, with Vitality on the verge of a bracket reset, but BDS on the verge of winning it all. In a thrilling overtime, BDS ultimately clutched it out, proving their proficiency as the strongest team in all of Europe. Fairy Peak with just a little bit of space. Can't get that second touch where he could hook it over to himself. Alpha has managed to find some room! Oh! And the crossbar for a third time denies oh, Vitality! My. Extra with a monstrous save. Keeps BDS in the series. That was Vitality's ticket. But it's been oh, stolen and no oh! extra! Gets the winning goal! He saves his team at one end and wins a major for them at the other. Extra has styled in these past three games. Just one major remains, so now all eyes are on North America to show off what they're made of in the last hurrah of the winter split. And now joining me on the line, it's legendary RLCS analyst, Michael Williams, AKA Achieves. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you, thank you. It's a pleasure to be on here. Uh, enjoy the RLC branding for no particular reason. I love it. It makes me happy. I'm glad it's you. You make me happy. It's a good day. <laughs> I like the start. I like these vibes. Before jumping into um, just all the, the hardcore Rocket League talk here, uh, you know, we've just come off the uh, three of the majors for the winter split here. Europe just finishing. Um, we've had a lot of Rocket League. For yourself, I just wanted to ask, you know, as as uh, you know casting all of this you know we've had a long season already and we still have another <laughs> split to go you know how is it for, for you having all this rocket league all the time uh you know i think i think i felt a lot more of the brunt of it at this the the middle point of like mm. the fall split because going from the league play version of rlcs to what it is now it's just like oh my gosh we have to watch all of these matches and all of the grid and try and compartmentalize and take it all in. But after you kind of get into it a little bit and settle into a flow and you kind of know where to focus your attention a little bit more, it, it's, <laughs> it's a lot easier now, I think. Uh, also being more directly involved with the grid, I think, helped a lot more because you're kind of looking at it with a more critical eye. So big thanks to Galaxy Racer for having me on for uh, the winter grid. So let's talk some Rocket League here. Let's dive into it. Just coming off, spoiler alert, BDS won again. Uh, <laughs> wow. Who would have seen that one coming, right? It, it feels like they're just unstoppable at this point. It seems like teams are getting close. They're going to best of fives. They're going to best of sevens. But they always inevitably come out on top. And just in your opinion, you know, everyone's trying to break it down. But what is it that's causing them this close but success? So it's, it's kind of an interesting question. And I actually see Team BDS has a lot of similarities uh, to back when Dignitas was the big dynasty, you know? It was mm -hmm. the communication was on point, the support system is always there, the boost efficiency is there, uh, the mechanics are there, no question. But the real big thing that I think sets BDS apart from that Dignitas dynasty is the pace, you know? It, it's just, it's all of that combined and ramped up. To, you know 11 right it's mm -hmm. it's the consistency at which they're able to be that version of, of consistently yeah. good and it's so so difficult to to play against players like extra out of the midfield and mark by eight and monkey moon over on the defensive half because they just don't mess up they yep. don't yep. it's stupid <laughs> like if you watched the 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 game today like they they gave up like an own goal but it wasn't even their fault you had to actually mess up the double tap to get them uh -huh. to own goal. It's yeah. like BDS, you, they force you to beat them. Let's talk about the teams 
really trying to pull up behind them. We're going to skip over Vitality too, because again, I, I think we're all in agreement. So the Vitality is still an incredibly strong team. That's why you see them go the distance with BDS. I want to look at those three to five, three to six kind of spots, because we see them shifting around between teams. Who's taking those spots? Uh, you know, for a while there, it seemed to be the blokes. Uh, you know, the blokes yeah. the team, Galaxy Racer, but obviously that's changing a little bit here. I think uh, in this particular major, the standout team that gave you that performance that really goes, wow, that's, they could do, you know, great things was Guild. We, we really, I personally enjoyed watching all of Guild's matchups. I thought Phil was playing phenomenally. Nolly was hitting some six shots, and, and all of them across the board, Nolly, Devo, and Tho, were incredible on the defensive side of things. And I thought that, you know, if they were able to, you know, get one of those by chance, sometimes the crazy goal happens in Rocket League, you know, maybe they knock off uh, a team that, in theory, should beat them a lot of times. And Guild really did put on a great show. I think that match versus Vitality could have gone either way. It was just unfortunate they couldn't pull it off. but. Uh, Guild was the, the team this week uh, and kind of that they've got it, but they have to be at peak performance all the time to be at that level. And that's the hard part. Oh, so geez, thank you so much for joining me on this. Uh, looking forward to, to chat with you during North America. He's, he, he has the boost, but he didn't have the control. Oh, there is Chad. Chad going maybe for the reset! And he got it! He got the flip reset! And that's how they won the first match of this bracket reset. And we have overtime. <laughs> Oxygen, one goal from being oh. eliminated from the Winter Major. Oh, man, in the past few goals for Oxygen oh, have been the demo Devo. Devo. It takes one kickoff, one dribble, and he hits it. Oh, that is so tantalizingly close. What an opening goal that would have been instead. Oh. The nil nil. Please go in. Oh my pass goodness. From Alpha 54. Oh my goodness. This touch from Alpha off the ceiling. And he dodges into it as well. Didn't find the net. Farah. Well done. Oh, so for Astro. Oh. An underflip. You see him flipping early so he could get this miraculous touch. Check out the timing on this shot. Astral. Hot shots should come with a caution that says, warning, you won't be able to do this at home. But now we move on to the achievable because it's time for the breakout. First up, Oliver Goldsmith hands his dad the controller. at first it looks like the greatest save ever but then when you watch the extended version of that you realize nobody had control at all but isn't that just the truth for all of us rocket league players anyways we're moving on because reddit user vlign posted these 3d printed octane stands so this is real real easy everybody can do this at home first just get the octanes then get you know a 3d printer print out the stands you know you may need some money in there it's simple steps easy you know what? I feel like I want to make a chair that's like that. This looks like I'm 
maybe okay and then it just looks like i'm tooting everywhere okay maybe not second we're we're canceling that moving on flunky 14 accidentally hit this flip but i think it's now up to us to try and do it on purpose <laughs> what We're calling this one the press A to flip. I, I don't know if many people will be able to recreate this, but good luck trying. Our next one comes from Is Jordy, who sets a good example for all of us. I don't think I've ever seen that before. I don't recommend trying to recreate that one, but I don't ever think I've seen a rule one pinch before. It's like some rare unicorn. Cool, enjoy it while, while you've seen it, because I don't think it's happening again. Finally though, our last post comes from Super Ninja who presents an alternative to a ball chaser. Now, come on, you know, just like every other Rocket League player, I love a good demo or two, but you gotta do it at the right time. You know the guy's tilted and just needs one now, or it's gonna be like an OCD, but you gotta do it in your rotations. I'll have to take him under my wing and show him how it's done. But up next, we try not to turn this show upside down when we go take a look at Torsos in Double Tap. Let's face it, since its inception, the RLCS has been extremely Europe and North America centric. Every champion thus far has been from one of those two regions, in part because they were the only recognized regions for the first few seasons of competition. So why don't we take a moment to honor one of the strongest players from outside the EU NA bubble, namely Australia's own keyboard warrior, Daniel Torsos Parsons. Torsos' first big break came in 2016, when he won a PAX and ESL sponsored online open. Together with friends Drippe and Jake the Tyrant, the team, known as Cringe Society, secured themselves a place in the Australian PAX ESL Finals. The pop and it's going to be Drippy looking for the rotates, Torsus around the corner, Monty now popping it off the wall, he's looking for this setup here, Drippe onto it now and as we get down to the wire, it looks like Atletico do not have this one in the bag and the Cringe Society will be looking at second seed going into the PAX LAN event. They're going to be very happy with that, and there it is, zero seconds, absolutely impossible. The ball touches the ground, GG's. Obviously, this turned some heads in the region, and mere days later, the squad was picked up by Alpha Sydney, an Australian-based esports org. While they wouldn't go on to win the PAX Finals, the team did see some successes the following year, most notably winning Throwdown TV's inaugural Rocket League Challenge, triumphing over many of Oceania's top teams. If they lose a goal, Jam may gain a favor. All it takes is one big clear or one big goal to maybe shake this oh, whole thing it. up. They've done it. Torso's now gonna take it. A third goal means a lot for Alpha Sydney for the top seed coming in this tournament. For the top seed of RLCS Oceania, Alpha Sydney, they have another shot. We have five seconds as Trippe steals the ball away. Ladies and gentlemen, for top seed, of Throwdown Season 2 and your champions. Additionally, 2017's RLCS Season 3 was the first time Oceania was made an official RLCS region, leading to Torsos and the rest of AS to become one of the very first teams to rep Oceania on the national stage. And with 20 seconds left, four goals is not gonna happen here. Alpha Sydney gonna take a win over Denial. The Australians showing up in style here against the Canadians as they pull this one off. The desperate predicted it correctly. The favorites are going to be the winners here as Alpha Sydney, it counts down, it hits the final second, and the ball, it's just got a touch. Alpha Sydney's done what nobody thought they could, <laughs> and they took it to Canada. OCE shows up immediately, nerves out 
the window. They played how they needed. Incredibly fast-paced, incredibly mechanically skilled. I, it was an absolute thrill to be able to cast these guys. Torsos continued to rep Australia in the RLCS moving forward, even making it as far as the semifinals as part of Chiefs Esports in Season 6. The place he continued to shine, however, was in regional competitions. Season after season, Torsos took first place in Throwdown TV's Oceanic competitions, cementing his status as one of the region's most consistent players. To RLCS representing OCE, these are our champions. But Chiefs are the grand champions. Champion Korea. You have to look at who comes through, not just yet, but one last play from Pale Horse Esports. Chiefs controlling this defense, and as this ball gets closer and closer, the victory goal. Ladies and gentlemen, the Chiefs are your Rocket League OCE Championship for Season 4. They'll be first seed going to RLCS. The keyboard killer also consistently showcased his skills in numerous Australia-based Gfinity events, walking away with the massive $20,000 prize pot after winning the second season of their Elite Series. Even after moving from Chiefs to Renegades and bidding farewell to OG teammate Drippe, Torsos continued to win regional after regional, raking in prize pools with his offensive skills. In late 2020, Torsos was picked up by Ground Zero Gaming, which proved to be quite the acquisition. In the months since, Ground Zero has won two out of the three winter split regional events and even taken home the grand prize as champions of the regional major. Walcott to express to the top corner is just wide. Second touch is not good either, but with seven seconds left, they got a score on this touch and it's behind oh. the ball. It's all over. Amphis will put the nail in the coffin, the dagger in the back. 3-0 for this game. Again, it's been all ground zero in the second series. What a roll from ground zero. You turn things around from getting honestly crushed in that first best of seven. I mean, a lot of fantastic plays from Riot, but didn't have the oh. same gravitas. While Torsos has still yet to go the distance and bring the RLCS trophy home to Australia, his impressive record and ever-improving skills suggest that he might just have gold in his future. Again, Europe and North America tend to take the center stage because they've been around the longest, so they've had the most time to develop, but I think you are doing yourself a bit of a disservice by not watching these other regions. We've seen some really entertaining Rocket League from Oceania and of course some really, really creative Rocket League from South America. I think, you know, the region's still got a bit to go, but hopefully that's what lands are gonna change with those majors being international lands in the future. In addition to a world situation, you're gonna see that experience start to spread across all those regions and everyone get uplifted as a result. Can't wait for it. But that's all the time we have for today. Thank you guys so much for watching. You can catch more of our content on YouTube and on Twitter at WatchRLC. But thank you again for watching. To send you out, here is your weekly backfire.